Oh yeah, it is recording. One, two, <clears throat> dear. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. That's right, that's right. What's going on here? Number seven was sounding great. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Hey guys, it's Archie. I'm back again for another special edition of the ADHD Care Podcast. I've got a special guest with me. I've got Dana uh, Bishop, who, who is... Hey guys, it's Archie. I'm back again for another special edition of the ADHD Care Podcast. I've got a special guest with me today. I've got um, Dana... Dana Bishop, who is from an um, organization called Relax Kids. Um, so the Relax Kids organization supports children. Hey guys, it's Archie. I'm back again for another special edition of the ADHD Care Podcast. And I've got a special guest with me, joining me virtually online today. I've got Dana Bishop. Hey guys, it's Archie. Um, hey guys, it's Archie. I'm back again for another special edition of the ADHD Care Podcast. I've got a special guest with me today, joining us via Zoom video link. I've got Dana Bishop. So Dana uh, is based in Surrey, and her organisation is called Relax Kids, and they support children, uh, children's mental and emotional well-being uh, with a range of tools, techniques to help the child or young person calm their body, mind, and build confidence and self-esteem. So uh, yeah, looking forward to this chat. Uh, so I'm going to bring Dana in and we're going to have a discussion around the kind of like how you know how he's so i'm going to bring um so i'm going to bring dana in so relax kids supports children uh hey guys it's archie i'm back again for another special edition of the adhd care podcast i've got a special guest with me today joining us virtually i've got dana bishop so dana comes from uh works uh from uh hey guys it's archie um Hey guys, it's Archie. I'm back again for another special edition of the ADHD Care Podcast. I've got special guests with me uh, joining us virtually. I've got Dana Bishop. So Dana works for Relax Kids, which is an organization that supports uh, children's mental uh, health and emotional well-being through a range of techniques uh, and tools um, to help the young person uh, learn techniques of um, being able to calm their body and build confidence as a result of that. So through, um, you know, tech. Hey guys, it's Archie. I'm back again for another special edition of the ADHD Care Podcast. I've got Dana Bishop joining us today virtually uh, from Relax Kids. And uh, so Dana supports, uh, so Relax Kids is an organization that supports uh, children's mental and emotional well-being uh, using a range of techniques uh, to help the young person calm their body and build confidence as a result, as well as their self-esteem. So I'm going to bring Dana in in a second. Just bear with me. Hello. 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 Hi, Dana. I just realised my camera's not on, but let me try. Oh, yeah, I am. Oh, there you are. <laughs> Hello. Uh, how are you? I'm okay. How are you? I'm all right. Good, thank you. It's been yeah. a while. Yes, I was actually thinking this as I was eating my lunch. I thought the last time I saw it is Jacob, isn't it? Yeah, Jake, yeah. yeah gosh I did remember yeah. okay it was I think it was May <laughs> when it was May 2021 so it was a couple of years wow. ago yeah it was I was, try, wasn't I was it? trying gosh, to work it out and it was around about that time so I can remember driving over to where you live so how is he yeah How's he's he doing, doing all right actually yeah he's in uh year three now and yeah, yeah settling gosh. in okay and, and you've got a younger one you've got a younger one haven't you I have, yeah, I've got Emily. She is, uh, she's just turned four, actually. The other oh, day. so oh, so she'll be starting school in September. She's starting school in September, oh, yeah. 
Yeah. Right? That's an exciting yeah. time. Things are changing when they're both Absolutely. in school. Yeah. Oh, well, like, send, my, send yeah. my love to Jacob, won't you? And say hello. We'll do. Yeah, I will brilliant. do. Thank you. And how's your how's your son as well? Well, he's um he got I don't think he'd been diagnosed with ADHD when no he hadn't been. So that year, November 2021, I think I said to you we had our suspicions um, and yeah. that he had ADHD because he's got complex health needs. Um yes, and he'd, right. always, he'd always really struggled um to regulate his emotions but we kind of thought oh it's what he's been through you know making him behave like this but then when I met other children who were going through similar things and they're I know everyone's different but I sort of thought no there's something going on here so he got diagnosed in the November of 2021 with ADHD which to be honest okay. with you wasn't a surprise really and um my husband is actually um being assessed at the moment because they're very right. similar and you often find that a parent quite often is diagnosed as well that because it made yeah. us think when we filled in all those questionnaires we were sort of saying to each other hang on a minute that's you you know my husband <laughs> so he, <laughs> yeah. he's, um, yeah. he's currently being assessed at the moment so um we right. haven't we haven't gone down the route of sort of any medication or anything for my son because he is complex with other medication that he's on you know for his other conditions um and yeah he's not doing too bad too bad he's 13 now he's starting to struggle in school more though because they choose their GCSE options a year early at Blenheim and you know the okay. pressure the pressure is mounting and I think once the pressure mounts it gets it can get harder yeah so um we're waiting yeah, yeah I think the next few years are going to be a bit of a a roller coaster when he's doing his GCSEs and he struggles to focus you know and concentrate and process all the yeah things, basically right so, right excellent <laughs> yeah <going> so <laughs> what is going on so uh, yeah, I thought I could bring you and just well first of all catch up with you because I haven't yeah, seen you course. for a while and yes. also find out to bring you and because we're doing a podcast of course uh to bring you as a guest and to find out more about Relax Kids because uh, yes. obviously it's an organization I've been quite familiar with for for a number of years now and um, because I get asked a lot by parents in terms of support for children uh, around mental well-being, emotional well-being. Um, and I have, as you know, I've referred uh, a few parents yes. to you. Yes. Uh, but I thought, some, you know, sometimes it's easier if you just come on a, uh, on a podcast and we can literally signpost people to okay. the podcast to hear about yourself and your organisation and how you operate and how you support young people. So, yeah. So if we can maybe just start about maybe just explain to us about what is Relax Kids? Okay, so um, Relax Kids is a programme teaching relaxation and mindfulness. Um, although it's called Relax Kids, it actually can also be used for um, teenagers. And because uh, often some people think kids, younger children, um, but it, the techniques can be used with teenagers, obviously adapted, you know, to the age group um, and even with adults. And some uh, relaxed kids coaches actually go into care homes and use some of the techniques with um, basically, you know, elderly people that live there. So it can really be used across the board. Um, and um, I just thought I'd say how I got involved with it first, if that's OK, because it sort of links it all together. So because of my yeah, son's um, obviously complex, he, my son is 13 and he's got complex health needs. And from a young age, he was really struggling. Um, to, uh, he wasn't able to manage and regulate his emotions. And I just thought I need to find something to help him help his brother and help us as a family because it impacts on the whole family basically and um, a friend of mine had done the training um, and she told me about it and my background is actually in teaching anyway so I've always worked with children so I basically um, signed up for the course um, about gosh I think it was nearly six years ago now um, five years ago um, initially really to help him and his brother and the family but then it, it just really took off um, because it's been actually proven psychologists have proven that um, relaxation and mindfulness can really um, help children um, with ADHD to learn to you know regulate their emotions and I think 
the younger you teach it basically for children to understand you know um, and be able to process their emotions and understand what is going on the more the technique sort of becomes you know second nature because I do actually work with some children who are age three in a child minding setting and you know they know from a young age oh if I do some deep breathing it could help me when I feel angry or when I feel sad um, but I would say it is a technique that can that it might not work by itself for children with ADHD, but certainly alongside, you know, maybe with other treatments and techniques, it can be a really valuable um, technique to use. Excellent. And do you you work closely with schools as well? I'm assuming. Yeah. So I I basically I do one to ones in people's homes and um, one to ones in school. So, for example, at the moment, I'm working with a child with ADHD, actually, who um, I did initially meet him in the home environment. But sometimes the home can be quite challenging for a session when the parents are around. Um, so sometimes it actually works better if the school which they're usually really happy to provide a room for me. Um, and then I go into, the parent arranges it and I go into the school and see the child in the school setting, um, which often works better. Um, but I do see a lot of children one-to-one -one in their homes as well. Um, I also do, um, haven't done for a while, but I was doing groups in schools. Um, and I, you know, I can still do that. It's just because my one-to-ones have become really busy, actually. And I, I do really enjoy um, seeing children on an individual basis. Mm. But I do, um, I go to a weekly child-minding setting. I've been with them for five years. Um, and I do things like brownies and cubs um, and different organisations that invite me in. But I think it's surprising still how many schools still don't know about Relax Kids actually, because the setting yeah. I'm in every week, the head finally kind of realized who I was this week and said, oh, hello, are you a, ther a therapist? And then I told him about what I do. And what I do say is actually, although he said, are you a therapist? What I say to people is, I'm not a therapist, but what I do is I teach children and their families relaxation and mindfulness techniques that they can practice and use in, in the home so I just make it clear that I'm not you know a psychologist or a psychotherapist or anything like that but um I've just got a real passion for this because you know living in a situation myself where I've used the techniques and seen how helpful they can be that I want to share share them um you know with other children shall I tell you about some of the techniques that I'm I actually yeah. teach within within the yeah. session so um, yeah, absolutely yeah so um basically um it involves lots of different techniques so I usually start with mindfulness games and mindfulness games are great um, for attention and focus and concentration. Um, and I often find that children who do, do struggle with that, they actually really enjoy the mindful games because what I usually do is I try to plan it around one of um, their hobbies or something that they enjoy. For example, yesterday um, we were doing a coronation themed relaxed kids because I can theme my sessions as well, which makes them fun. And for the mindfulness game, I had a big tray of um, lentils and I'd hidden what we called the crown jewels and the child had to find them within the lentils. Or I might do something like a child love football. So um, I did a quiz, you know, on football facts. Um, or a game called solitaire where you have to really concentrate and work out where the marbles need to move on the board um, and I find you know that really draws them in and whereas they might struggle normally to concentrate when it's done in a game um, technique they usually really enjoy it so we start with mindful games um, quite often as well we we at the beginning of the session we start with a story um, based on whatever uh, if we're looking at a particular emotion, say it is anxiety or anger, I'll um, have an age appropriate book to use to sort of start and open up the session. So one of my favorites for um, anxieties and worries is the huge bag of worries. So we read that, discuss how important it is to talk about your worries because that's the moral of that particular story. And then that leads nicely into the rest of the session. And actually it reminds me one of the, um, the techniques that I often teach when I'm talking about anxieties and worries is something called the five senses grounding technique. 
Um, and that right. is all about using, um, and obviously that's quite a big word if you're using, um, if you're if I'm doing a session with younger children. So I basically explain to them, it's about using your five senses. And we talk about what are the five senses and then by using those to help calm you and help bring you back into the moment when those anxieties or even anger is starting to overtake and you just really can't think straight. So um, they really enjoy that technique because I talk about things like, um, I do it a bit differently to often adults are taught of what they can look at in the room and what they can hear in the room and what they can smell. But I say things like, oh, what's your favorite thing to look at? What makes you happy? What's your favorite smell? What's your favorite thing to eat? Um, what sound makes you happy? And, um, and what thing when you touch it makes you feel calm or happy? And they often come up with things like a teddy or a hug from mum or dad, or sometimes they say the, um, the fidget toys that help them feel calm. So that's a really um, good technique to teach. So we start yeah, with the mindful games, the books, and um, I teach a bit of self or peer massage um, if we're in a group, um, because massage releases feel good um, chemicals, endorphins in the brain, um, and that can be really relaxing and calming. And one child I'm working with at the moment, I've got some massage tools like props that he can use because I just show them how to do it and they can then use it on themselves. And he finds that really, really relaxing. He struggles to focus with a lot of things, but when it comes to the massage, he just sits there and loves using all the different tools or massaging his face or his hands. Um, so I teach some massage. Um, also the deep breathing. So the deep breathing is really important and it's like an anchor back to the present moment. And in fact, I should have brought one of my props with me to show you, but quite often when we're talking about deep breathing, I call it um, deep belly breathing um, because you're using your belly at the same time and I have something called a breathing ball which is a colorful ball that you open in and out and I basically demonstrate to the children that that is their belly and when they're breathing in through their nose and out through their mouth I'm showing them what the, their belly is doing with the ball and obviously they can put their hand on their belly um, and I explain that it's it's the breathing the breathing needs to be slow deep breathing because when it's fast breathing that isn't going to calm you it's a deep breathing that helps bring you back into the moment because what they're doing is focusing on their breathing instead of those emotions that are trying to take over and I do it um not just through the breathing board we use feathers um the slinky toys that you can pull in and out quite often if I'm talking about the worries we blow away our worries with the um uh blowing bubbles um, and talk about blowing them away. So it's all done, you know, in a fun way. It's not just, oh, let's just sit here and do some deep breathing. We often use yeah. props and tools. Um, also mm -hmm. um, affirmations, which I talk about the power of affirmations and how that can actually change your mind um, and make you have a more positive mindset if you're using those positive words. And actually, again, that's great to teach from a younger age because we as adults often feel quite self-conscious about saying affirmations, kind words to ourselves. But I find with the three-year-old, you know, they're actually really confident at looking into a mirror, for example, and saying, I am brave, I am strong. Um, so yeah, the power of, of affirmations is really important as well. And actually some children are uncomfortable at just saying them aloud. So um, quite often I use mindful crafts um, when we're talking about affirmations and they might um, create, for example, if we're doing a session on confidence, they might create their cloak of confidence and decorate it with positive, powerful, confident words. So instead of saying them aloud, they're actually seeing them, you know, visually on their cape of confidence or they're creating um, an island of calm and happiness. And the idea of that is that the only one rule is there's no worries allowed on that island. And this island can be as sort of wacky as they want it to be. They could have trees made of candy floss and rivers made of chocolate. But the idea is, is that they can close their eyes and imagine that they are on that island if they're having worries again 
a lot of children and like adults have worries at bedtime and struggle to get to sleep so that's a good technique if they want to just close their eyes and imagine that they're on on their island of happiness and then we always mm. end um the session with meditation um so kind of we started off a bit the session more lively and then worked down through um to the meditation at the end when they can basically be calm and there's lo loads of lovely um relaxed kids meditation books that i use for my sessions um mm. and it gives them a chance to just you know close their eyes and use their imagination and often we just don't have time in busy lives do we to be still um so actually that that technique is one of the techniques that it's obviously really important but can take longer sometimes for children to be comfortable with lying still and just closing their eyes sometimes they start yeah. just sitting up and just listening to it or sometimes with children that really struggle to focus what I actually do is whilst they're doing the mindful craft I read the meditation whilst they're doing it so they don't feel that pressure of I have to lie down, I have to close my eyes, I have to, you know, kind of be still and listen. They can actually just sort of be listening to it whilst they're busy creating their island or their cape or, you know, whatever it may be. Because I, I do know, you know, children can struggle with that bit to be, you know, still and quiet. So, um, mm. yeah, that's that's sort of in a nutshell, yeah. the techniques that I teach. Mm. Amazing. With the young people that you work, what, what, what's the youngest age group that you, you work with? So um, basically three year, three year olds. So in the child minding setting right. I mentioned that, well, actually some of them even start to join in when they're two because they, I go there weekly. So what they start to do is the um, child minders who run the setting kind of get them to dip in and out of parts of the session and listen in. Um, so, right. but basically usually three year olds and quite often with the younger ones, I will do a shorter session, which is half an hour instead of an hour, because obviously an hour is a long time for little ones yeah. to, to, to focus. But even sometimes yeah. with older children, actually, who find it difficult to focus and concentrate, I do a shorter session because I'd rather mm. a child get most out of the session within half an hour than be stretching it out to an hour. And they're, they're really, you know, they've had enough, basically. So half an hour session. Yeah. Like, as well so with some of these techniques if you think about young people that might struggle with emotional dysregulation which is very yes. common with adhd they might get angry quite easily get yes. frustrated irritable uh in terms of transferring some of these techniques in those situations i.e in school amongst other peers in social situations um it, how do you find young people are able to implement or remember what they've learned through your kind of sessions yeah, I think it takes, it does take a lot of practice and it's not just me going in and doing one session. It, you know, it might be a period of maybe six sessions. And also, you know, I reiterate to the parents that they need to sort of keep reminding their child to practice at home to be able to then, you know, put these techniques into place because I know, you know, often these children, including my own son, actually, who's also got ADHD, go from zero to a hundred. One minute, sorry. Okay. <laughs> I've lost the sound. One minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a sip of water then. Sorry about that. 
no problem. <laughs> can you, I thought, can you hear me? I thought I'd said something wrong because you sort of went, oh, like that. And I thought, oh, no, if I said something, <laughs> I shouldn't say. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. <laughs> I just realised, um, yeah, it's a long story. But, yeah, so, so, there was a, there was a, yeah, something just switched off on my end. So obviously because oh, no. I'm recording this. So, yeah, that's the last thing you'd want to happen when you're doing a podcast where oh, everything hey- just shuts down. So. Oh, no, had it, had it literally just stopped? It literally just, yeah, everything just stopped. So, oh, yeah, no, yeah, you don't want that so, happening, do you? <laughs> no, absolutely, exactly. <laughs> so do, do you uh, want to go back to the beginning so of that, that? Do you want to start again with yeah, that so, question? Yeah, so the question was around young people that work, uh, sorry, young people that have issues with emotional dysregulation that might struggle with uh, controlling their temper, getting frustrated easily or getting irritable. And I was asking just in terms of how they are able to transfer some of the skills that they learn from you through your sessions into those real life situations. Yeah, and um, so I think it's really important to remember that these sort of techniques aren't like a magic wand and they you know help overnight their techniques like with everything we learn I suppose even like learning to read you know those techniques at school you need to continue to practice them so um you know it could be helpful if I do a period of sessions with the child because we repeat obviously different the different techniques each week and also for parents to encourage their children to practice these techniques at home and it's really helpful I think if the school are on board as well with these different techniques so um one of the things i do to sort of reinforce the practice at home is to for maybe create a calm box so that then a child has got a toolbox of resources that they can use um and go to you know when they feel these emotions try and get um, to using them before you know they erupt basically and go from zero to a hundred trying to acknowledge there and really understand their emotions and how they're feeling um and i put things in these calm boxes like for example we, if we were doing feather breathing they could put a feather into the box um they might put a picture of somebody they love or something that makes them feel happy into the box um sometimes we make something called a breathing stick which is basically a pipe cleaner with 10 beads on and as they breathe in and out they move the beads along another tool that they could use that that could go into their box or um I used to call them fidget toys but I actually learned recently from my um son Senko I thought he'd gone on a course and said um focus tools instead of saying fidget because actually we often think of fidget fidgeting as being a negative thing um so actually I think by calling them focus tools it's true these tools these toys help children to focus for me I'd find them distracting but my son really finds if he's using one of these focus tools it actually focuses his mind so things like that going into the box or maybe a meditation book um or some Mm. affirmations written down so I find that you know if they've got a toolbox of techniques that can help them to remind them to go to the this toolbox and as I say, again, I think, you know, with the school being on board as well and with the breathing techniques, which I think are really powerful. And I talk about this during my sessions. I say if I had to choose one of the techniques, I think deep breathing would probably be my main one because it's that technique that you can just do very quickly um, and to just help your mind to focus, you know, from and take over from those big emotions. And I often teach hand breathing. Uh, where you go um, up and down your fingers breathing in and out obviously doing all of them and I say that is a technique you can use anywhere so you don't need a feather you don't need a breathing stick you can put your hand under the desk at school and you know take your deep breaths you can sit in the back of the car on a school bus or something and use that technique Um, so I think the key thing is practicing these techniques realizing that you know that they can be used alongside maybe other therapies that you might already be using or treatments and yeah um, yeah, not expecting it to be a miracle overnight but certainly Mm. with my son he's got a severe needle phobia because of treatments he's had to have for his medical needs and it has taken a long time but he is now at the point where he 
allows um, my husband to do the injection. We know how to help. It would usually take three of us to hold him. And all he does now is he shouts out, I am brave, I am brave, I am brave. Yeah, and that is because, I mean, it's taken a long time to get to that point with him, but I have taught him, you know, the power of affirmations and these positive words. Um, so, yeah, I mm. definitely think they can be really helpful, but it takes it takes practice. And I was going yeah. to say actually earlier, the psychologists, and I'm just reading it because I forget their names, um, that have actually proven that um, mindfulness practices can strengthen the areas of the brain responsible for attention, emotional control and problem solving. Um, that they're the psychologists, Kirk um, Strazel and Patricia Robinson. They've written um, in the mo in this moment. I couldn't remember their names. So that's why I had to read them. But I thought it's great. Yeah research has been done to prove mm. that mindfulness and relaxation techniques can help you know with adhd mm -hmm. and i suppose some of these techniques as well they're quite useful in any situation i'm thinking for young teenagers about to see their gcse's or a level exams and they're feeling quite stressed and anxious leading up to it um yeah that's just one of the many examples where you De can definitely you know, fact, implement I, um, some of these strategies Definitely. In fact, on the other end of the spectrum, I've been invited yeah. into a nursery for the last half term to do seven sessions leading up to the children um, leaving to start primary school so that they've got these techniques ready at hand to help them, you know, when they're feeling anxious in a new setting. Um, and I've got some lovely books that I use about preparing children, you know, to start school. Um, but definitely, yes, any of these sort of situations with exams, the SATs, the GCSEs. Yeah. Um, I've worked mm. with yes, a teenager last year who was, uh, no, actually she was an 11-year-old sitting her 11 plus and getting very stressed about those exams. So I went in for a few sessions at home and gave her the techniques and tools to use. Um, and the feedback that I get, you know, is really positive where parents are saying, that their child has said, you know, it really helped. They did some deep breathing. They said, I can do this. Uh, they said their affirmations before they went in and sat the exam. Um, and I'm also working with um, a charity, actually, um, because my son's got a life-threatening kidney condition. So the charity have actually employed me as their relaxation and well-being coach, because a lot of the children with the kidney condition, nephrotic syndrome, they really struggle with emotions because it's like being on a roller coaster living with any complex medical condition and so I've been working with children all around the country um, through Zoom and the charity actually fund two sessions per family for any children that right. want the sessions to give them the techniques to help them you know manage their emotions. Mm. Yeah the work that you do with parents or carers um, uh, yeah can you just describe to us what that looks like. Yeah, so um, I basically also offer parent relaxation. I haven't been doing so much of that recently. I was working for an organisation where I wrote my own course and then was teaching it all around um, Surrey. But because I wrote the course myself, I'm still able to use it and teach it to um, parents, either individually or groups. So for example, um, an organization called Family Voice Surrey, who support parents of children with ADHD and ASD, and also a local um, ADHD support group to me. They're the organizers, one of them was on Zoom, one of them was in person, invited me in to talk about the techniques that I teach children, but also at the same time, giving parents the tools for themselves because um, I know firsthand being a parent carer can be really exhausting you know mentally draining and it's really important to have some time for yourself so it's the same sort of techniques but obviously in a talk in an adult way um, so yeah. we might we will do a meditation that is obviously much longer um, we mm. talk about um, the power of affirmations. Um, so all of the techniques I talked about earlier, but basically talk to adults. And I also um, wrote a course for the organisation I was working for, but now do it independently, how to manage your children's anxiety and stress. Um, so using mindfulness and relaxation. So mm. um, basically we talk about, you know, what anxiety and stress is, what causes it. 
what are the symptoms and then we talk about how um, mindfulness and relaxation and actually not just mindfulness and relaxation how there are other techniques as well as mindfulness and relaxation can help um, help children manage anxiety and stress and I think I was going to say one of the key things as well I think is that I teach is children understanding what is actually going on in their brain when they're feeling these big emotions so um you know we we often explain it with adults we talk about um the fight 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 flight freeze response um, yeah. but with children we talk about it in a more simplified way where, where we talk about animals so we mm. talk about it's the meerkat if you think about a meerkat they're always upright and, and so they're looking for danger and it's your meerkat protecting you when that fight flight freeze response takes over but the part of the brain we want to be in control is the frontal cortex which is what we call the at wise owl which helps you um be logical helps you with understanding and reasoning but sometimes to protect you your meerkat your amygdala takes over and so by teaching these mindfulness and relaxation techniques, um, their wise owl can take control when that when they fear that feel that meerkat is overtaking, they can use their memory, which we call um, I've even forgotten what the memory is myself. Now talking about memory, we talk about the elephant <laughs> because the elephant right. never forgets, yeah. apparently. So right. we say yeah. you can remember these techniques like your elephant. Um, so that when you feel the meerkat taking over, you use these techniques to help your uh, wise owl be in control. And they really do get that. And sometimes I have puppets, depending on the age. And I remember when I first started this, um, my three year old um, was hearing that my seven year old at the time was having a big meltdown. And he said, Mommy, it's his meerkat. You know, he really understood from three years old because he heard me talk about it. He used to come to groups that I used to teach. And, and the child that was having the meltdown, I'd always talk to him about what was happening. And then he did get to the point where he'd say, it's not my fault, it's my meerkat. But obviously then you need to move <laughs> on from that of using those techniques to help calm the meerkat. So I think it really helps yeah. as well if they've got an understanding of what is going on when they're feeling these big emotions and those emotions are taking over. Yeah, it's, it sounds like obviously like if, you, uh, young persons uh, receiving some therapy, like through CBT, for example, cognitive behavior therapy, yes. it, it's it's got that element of a kind of a CBT model to it, isn't it? Like the emotional literacy, labeling your emotions, yes. uh, knowing how these emotions present in your body. Like um, I don't know, do you, do you cover things like yes. when your heart is beating fast, De and your sweaty you know, palms yeah. and things. I'm glad you yeah. raised that point actually, because what I one of the techniques I do is draw around the child. I've got a huge rolled out piece of paper, draw around them, which they usually love with the younger children anyway. And then we talk about um, these different places that you feel these emotions in your body. So then we might they might write on their hands sweaty palms, or with me when I'm nervous, my hands go freezing cold. I do the opposite, or they might draw a heart and put heart racing. Um, or headache, you know, caused by anxieties and worries, tummy ache, feeling like butterflies. So you're exactly right, naming and labelling these feelings and emotions. And quite often when I go into a big group session and I'm feeling quite nervous, I'm really honest with the children. In, and when I'm talking about these different techniques and I say, when I came in today, I said I was feeling really nervous outside. Uh, my hands were cold, um, my heart was beating fast, so I took some deep breaths and I said to myself, you can do this. Um, for them to understand that actually adults feel these emotions as well, because I was working, well, I've worked yeah. with some children who actually have been quite shocked to realise that adults feel these emotions as well, because some adults do actually hide their emotions from their children. Um, and, I, and I think it's important to you know express your emotions i'm not talking about totally losing it but you know say showing when you're sad saying you're you know you're crying explaining why because i think you know if they learn that we all feel these emotions as well that really helps yeah yeah absolutely 100 percent on that and um i was going to raise a point just now completely slipped my mind <laughs> <laughs> a bit like me with my memory with the elephant <laughs> <laughs> yeah. we, we aren't elephants today um, we're forgetting 
<laughs> we are, yeah, completely. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think it's uh, around, yeah, I think we covered the emotional literacy. I was going to bring up a point. Oh, it's a good point I was going to bring up, actually. But, um, it, yeah, um, anyway, it's completely slipped my oh, mind. Oh, it's I'll, so I'll, annoying, I'll isn't it, yeah, I'll, I'll come back to that. It's so... <laughs> Yeah, that's why it, I should be jotting down some of my. I should have a notepad next to me. Yeah, yeah, I've got notes with uh, me actually to help me remember certain points that I thought you might want me to talk about. So it does help. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe tell us about the structure of Relax Kids, the company itself. Like how many therapies you have? Uh, where, well, where to you, be honest with you, how I'm, you see I'm, clients? Yeah, I, to be honest with you, the actual structure of Relax Kids. I don't know how many coaches there are. I know I, there's they are there are coaches training and joining all the time. There are coaches all around the world um, in different countries, Australia, I think South Africa, Europe. Um, so I know that there are coaches all over the world. I wouldn't be able to tell you every single country, but they're deaf. It's a worldwide um, right. basically um, organization. And Marnetta, yeah. um, who set up the organization she um she actually started off she was a children's entertainer and what she was finding when she was doing parties was that children were really struggling to focus even at a party um you know watching the entertainer and she had a passion for mindfulness and relaxation and um she thought you know how can I put this together and um she created relax kids and I don't know how many years ago it was, it was at least 20. Um, I should know these facts off by head, but I'm afraid these are the things that I don't know. Um, but there's a Relax Kids um, website that um, you can have a look at for you know, all information about um, the organisation and also the different resources because they've got more that are added all the time. In fact, Marnette has recently written, I think it's three new books. There is also a brilliant book called The Imaginarium for Teenagers, which basically is about um, thinking of what emotion that you're feeling that day and then looking through the book and thinking, which meditation do I want to um listen to based on how your emotion so the different chambers of the brain she calls it in this book so there's different books ranging from three-year-olds up to teenagers and also different resources and cds downloads as well so a lot of people prefer downloads now um so yeah it's it's a big organization but i need to find out these numbers actually myself yeah. because um i just know they're increasing <laughs> all the time more and more people right you know, with training and, to be coaches and, and when you work with a young person online virtually um trying to teach these techniques um is, is it still quite as effective as doing in person it is actually, I was really um, kind of thinking during COVID and lockdown, I was thinking, oh my goodness, how is this going to work? And like a lot of us, we were kind of forced into Zoom, weren't we, online for the first time and thinking, oh gosh, out of your comfort zone. But actually, it was it was one of the positive things that sort of came out of lockdown because I realised it really does work online as well I mean there are some children of course who it just won't work for them because they need to be face to face and they'll just be distracted you know at the other end of the screen but the techniques can be taught um, online as well as they can be in person and I just adapt obviously some of the games that I normally have um, you know that a practical game in my hands that I normally play with a child I can't do that with a child online but I've adapted mindfulness games that we can use through the screen um, so I've, I've been really pleased and the feedback that I've had from parents especially through the charity I'm working with because it's more now that I just do the online sessions with them so obviously I see people face to face now um, I've had really positive feedback. And in fact, one child, I've only ever obviously seen her online. She's all the way up um, in Leeds. Her mum took her to see a psychologist for their sort of follow up appointment. And um, she sent me a lovely message saying the psychologist couldn't believe it was the same child. Um, how, you know, much of an improvement she'd seen in this child with her, basically how she felt about herself and emotionally. And she said, whatever you've been doing, continue doing it, which then obviously mum told her about our sessions. And um, as I said, a charity initially offered the two paid for set funded sessions, but mum's continued 
um, for me to continue working with her daughter because they've really seen the benefits and that's online. So it shows it really does work virtually. So yeah, for those, uh, yeah. those families um, that live further away or it just doesn't work with work commitments for the, for the parent, you know, with them being at home, it's great now that I can offer this as well as um, face-to-face appointments yeah so, and with the yeah, yeah with the resources and the tools that you use for your sessions if it's if it's done virtually um do you ask the parents to purchase the materials beforehand or sometimes work? what i do depending on how many sessions so if i'm only doing a few i don't always need the actual physical tool so we'll do hand breathing um i'll right. show them the breathing ball and then the parent might then buy one for the future to practice with Sometimes I've then actually sent resources, like one child I was working with for a longer period of time, parent gave me address her address so that I could then send the, the beads and the pipe cleaner used for the, um, the breathing stick. Or the parent might be quite happy to say, do you know what, we've got some feathers at home. So sometimes I, you know, we think outside the box and I say, have you got any of these things at home that you could use? Yeah. Um, but otherwise, there's always ways around it. I think I learned that during lockdown. You really had to try and think outside of the box, didn't you? And, and use your imagination. Yeah. So, um, mm. but yeah, some parents do choose to buy the resources or I can send them as well, like small things um, in the post if we get right. to that point where we feel they'll be beneficial. Yeah. And, and the resources themselves, they can be bought through Relax Kids website or yeah so uh, the book the things like the books and the downloads um cds yeah they can be bought through um relax kids website the things like as i said it's a shame i forgot to bring my breathing ball with me it's downstairs um they but actually if parents just type in breathing ball it does come up it's a colorful ball um and you can buy them from amazon and they i think they're only they're i think they're under five pounds um and the great thing is that a lot of the things that I use are really cheap to buy, you know, or don't cost much at all. Feathers, you can get anywhere. Great thing about feathers, I use those um, multi-purpose. They use those to practice the breathing, like blowing a feather off their hand or holding it and breathing and blowing the feather. Or that, the feather's great for um, a massage. So they love that on the on their face, arms, hands. So feathers are one of my favourite um, props because it could be used for yeah. a couple of different things, the massage and the um, the deep breathing. Mm. It's, it's not just children with ADHD uh, that you work with. Um, do you also work with children that have like autism, for example? Yeah, I have worked with some children um, with ASD. Um, obviously, as we said, ADHD as well. And to be honest, what I say to parents is that because some parents think that there kind of has to be maybe an issue going on related to emotional dysregulation um, for me to to um, be involved in um, practice my sessions with their child but I think the most beneficial thing is I think children all need to learn these techniques as I said earlier from a young yeah. age because no I agree if, if they learn them from a young age like learning to read learning to count it becomes second nature to them and I have found, I say, it's most powerful seeing the little ones I work with in the child minded setting because they are the youngest I've worked with. And that the, the techniques become second nature to them instead of introducing them when they're older. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. It's great whatever age you learn. I, but I think, gosh, I wish I learned these when I was younger and I wish my eldest was younger when I learned more about these techniques because... Um, as I said, I think it then becomes a tool that they just go to, um, you know, as a natural thing. Yeah, yeah. And why do you think uh, a lot of parents are not familiar with relaxed kids? Is that, um, is that yeah, yeah just, do you just know, think I think from how I found out about Yeah, yeah I think more people are becoming aware of it. Um, then when I started yeah. six years ago, I think because more people have trained as well, um, uh, but yeah, yeah, I don't know. I think parents stumble across it sort of by accident mm. because when people contact me, to be honest with you, 90% of my work is word of mouth, which is lovely because it's all recommendations. But then the odd occasion, I'll get an email that comes through. And um, like recently, a parent said, oh, they'd gone onto the Relax Kids website, I think because they stumbled across it by accident. And then they could see that there are coaches in different areas. 
um, and then they got my details because you can find different coaches on there as well. That's another thing um, in the areas that they're usually, you know, based in. Um, so she'd got my details off of the website and then contacted me. Um, so I think quite often people do stumble across relaxed kids. Sometimes they have heard of it because there's a relaxed kids coach in the school. Um, and as I say, although relaxed coaches, kids coaches are very busy, I, I actually don't know why you know, people still um, aren't aware of relaxed kids um, as, you know, as they should be really. But I think people yeah. are starting to find out more because I think relaxation and well-being over the last few years as a technique is more recognised. Um, yeah. So whereas before, you know, um, gosh, even probably going back 10 years, people were saw relaxation and mindfulness. Some people saw it as being a bit, wacky a bit out there but um I think people are realizing the benefits and actually that was another thing I, I was just going to say because one of the things I talk about when I do my um course that I teach I talk about the um, benefits of mindfulness and it's been proven that mindfulness relieves stress it improves mental health um it helps focus our attention and helps us gain an awareness of our emotion and physically as well um, it can be it can help lower blood pressure, although I always say, you know, obviously, if you've got a health condition you're concerned about, then obviously always speak to your GP, but it can help lower blood pressure, reduce chronic pain. Um, my mum has got a chronic pain condition and every night she listens to meditation to help her sleep um, and actually added to that it can improve sleep um, and it's been proven to help with um, stomach um disorders as well so there are a lot of you know proven benefits and i think now that people are realizing that it's becoming a more recognized um uh, practice you know that people yeah. will consider yeah that and, and that should be that should be prescribed by even gps like. it, i agree <laughs> and in fact some gps um You've just reminded me I should go around to my GPs. OK, some GPs actually ages ago, I left my um, cards because the GP was talking to me about it and was actually recommending me because they obviously see a lot of children at the beginning of this. Um, when parents are recognising that there are issues, often the first thing with, with their child regulating their emotions, often the first port of call is they go to their GP. And then obviously sometimes that leads to, you know, possibly a refer referral to the paediatrician and then being assessed or a private therapist. Um, but, you know, he was actually recognising that in giving out my card and realising actually sometimes these children don't need to be assessed. It doesn't know, need to go further. Sometimes just these techniques are enough, you know. Yeah. And quite often I'm yeah. seeing children who, because as we know, uh, I know you're private, but the waiting list for the NHS for assessments is, I think it's still about three years. It's a long process. Um, I yeah. see a lot of children whose parents have contacted me, you know, in desperation and they just, they want something. And I can at least start with teaching the child these techniques while they're waiting as well, you know, to be assessed. Mm, mm, no, no, absolutely, I agree, and I, th I think it's, yeah, with the whole kind of primary care, like schools, GPs, um, you know, health visitors, and they're the ones that, uh, you know, that's where, as you say, that's where the parents would usually turn to for the in the in the first yes. instance if they are struggling with the child's emotions, and before you go down the route of maybe looking for a formal diagnosis, it's yes. even if the child eventually gets assessed and diagnosed with either ADHD or autism or any other condition. Um, it's always still quite useful, irregardless of whether you have a diagnosis or not. Definitely, just to, in fact, to um, the young person to to learn. Yeah, definitely. In fact, funniest of places, I was at a car boot sale at the weekend, and I I actually bumped into three parents who I used to do relax kids with their children. And yes, they have now got to the point where they are diagnosed and there's different issues going on, but they still really thank me for the techniques that I I teach and one of, one of them on a stool she had a breathing ball that they no longer use because the children are a lot older <laughs> she didn't realize it was me and I said how much is that and then she realized it was me she said 
you can have that for free, she said, because I know what you're going to, going to use that for and how valuable <laughs> that will be. And I said, oh, thank you, because my other one's been so well loved and used, it's now broken. <laughs> um, but so it's <laughs> nice to hear, you know, OK, not so nice to hear that there's now other issues and they have had a diagnosis, but that they still appreciate that those techniques did help, you know, and are still mm. helping alongside sometimes, you know, with other things as well. Yeah. And if people want to reach out to you, how, how do they get in touch? So basically, I have got um, a Facebook page is one of the ways, which is Relax Kids. Tadworth and Walton with Dana. I know it's a bit of a mouthful, so I don't know whether you can type it in somewhere <laughs> for people to know. <laughs> yeah. And um, then also people can email me um, and obviously call me as well. So I can give you those um, details. So you, I think you've got them actually on one of my um, cards that I gave you ages ago. But they can basically yeah. email, message me on my Facebook page or my email is actually relaxkidsdana at gmail.com. Or, or my number which you can add as well if you like so there's they can contact me in any way and then I'll either email message you back and then usually I give the parent a call and we have a chat because it's easier to kind of chat through the issues before we then usually arrange a session and what what usually happens is we usually arrange uh, you know one session first see if the child enjoys it which they usually do um, and then nine out of ten times parents then call me back and say oh can you do another session can you do another session and I think the important thing yeah. to say as well for those children who've been nervous initially about seeing me that they've um, quite quickly realized that actually what we do is fun and we're not just sitting there and I'm questioning them about their emotions and how they feel these conversations all come around in a, a fun way during the session. Like I've got conversation cubes where I throw them and they've got questions on and they like choosing the colour. And then actually what they don't realise is I'm, I'm finding out a bit more about their emotions as well, because some of the questions are simple. Right. Like your favourite ice cream. But then one of the questions might be, oh, can you tell me a time when you were brave or when did you last feel sad? So they're actually opening up a bit. Um, but it's all through games and, and, and fun. And I think once they've realised that, they say, oh, can I have another session, please? Because they realise we're not sat at a desk and I'm just questioning them. <laughs> they usually yeah. And, and um, in terms of, like, uh, parents wanting to reach out to you what, um, and or them not sitting here or listening to this podcast and thinking, because um, sometimes it can be quite difficult to know what your child needs. Sometimes what we usually hear parents might think or oh, my child might have autism ADHD or my child struggling with emotions and things to then work out or you know maybe reach out to you I'm trying to see whether that fits that whole conversation around or maybe my child could benefit from seeing Dana to learn about meditation and relaxation to yeah for, for that to I don't think it's something that crosses people's minds a lot generally I think they might think therapy rather than oh I want them to learn about techniques to yes I see to what you mean like relax. they might they might more book a child in to see a psychologist or a yeah. psychotherapist yeah, yeah. or something like that rather than or CBT or something rather than the yeah. relaxation and mindfulness techniques I think the important yeah. message is realizing um, as I briefly touched on earlier is that these techniques are I think vital for any child so there's no harm in discussing it with me in trying it um in seeing if you think it's the right thing for your child because personally I know I say I'm biased I teach it but I am so passionate about it and I believe these techniques are beneficial to every child whether you think they're struggling to regulate their emotions or actually you think they're the most calm child on the planet that these techniques are valuable because that child who's at really calm at the present moment in the future can face challenges and difficult emotions where these techniques will always be valuable to use so um but so i think it's always basically you know worth worth trying yeah you touched on it briefly earlier um which i usually hear as well in my clinic children that struggle to go to sleep and usually because obviously during the day they're quite distracted they're busy yes. they get to bed they're laying there their mind is constantly racing and they're thinking about all different things. Some of them yes. are starting to worry. And what, what advice would you give to well, parents I, or to yeah, that young person? I, 
I've been through this myself with my my own son and I know it, how challenging it can be for the whole family um, because as you said it's that time of day and I talk to children about this you know where your mind you know your mind isn't quiet your mind is busy but the environment around you is usually quiet so that is the time children and adults our minds often start racing and thinking about things that you're maybe worried about and then you struggle to go to sleep so there's a few different techniques I use so um, sometimes I give children little worry dolls that they can put underneath their pillow they're the little South African tiny dolls with the idea that you put them underneath your pillow and they can take your worries away while you're sleeping as I say these are all age appropriate to the age of the child I'm working with some children really yeah. like the um the worry um, monsters, you can get them all in different colours. They've got a zip on their mouth where the idea is before they go to bed, they write their worries down or their parent helps them. They put them in the worry monster's mouth and the worry monster eats the worries whilst they're asleep. Um, obviously, the parent needs to remember <laughs> to remove the worries at night. And it's not saying, oh, your worries can just disappear. It's just a technique to add to help calm their mind you know if they've got these worries at bedtime sometimes I give children again depending on, on their age um something that I call a calm um stone uh, or a calm jewel and they can have that at bedtime they keep it in a little organza bag and if they wake up in the night one boy I work with I keep saying boys but I work with lots of girls as well one boy I was working with he would wake up in the middle of the night with nightmares so he would then get the um the calm stone and hold it in his hand because it was nice and cool on his hand and do some deep breathing like take 10 deep breaths while he held his calm stone you know and then try and lay back down and go to sleep um and of course you've also got the meditation which is great at, to use at bedtime either a parent can read it from yeah. one of the many books they could listen to the um a download or a cd um, and I think they're, you know, really help to calm your mind because um, especially on the downloads and the CDs, it's Marnetta who reads them and her voice is so soothing. But sometimes children prefer the voice of a parent, you know, a loved one. Um, so might prefer a book. But the great thing about the CDs and the downloads, you can have that on and they can listen to that instead of you having to continuously read it as they're falling asleep. Um, so I know, again, you know, it these things might not happen overnight they can take time but at least there's some tools and the and the one I mentioned earlier as well actually is that um island of happiness or island of calm which they often create with me in a session and then visualizing that if they're struggling to get to sleep or they've got these worries taking over and close their eyes and imagine that they're on that island and as the children are creating them I did this with a big group of brownies last week they were smart really smiling and enjoying creating it and I was saying to them look how it's making you feel you know creating that island so yeah there's just a few different techniques that I talk about um when children are struggling with sleep yeah um I remember what I was going to ask you earlier. Oh, good. <laughs> Just good. My head, so came I didn't back. Got came, back came back to the elephant brain. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> um, so um, I, I'm very familiar with uh, the concept of CBT. So, and sometimes we use a concept called um, externalizing, um, trying to move the concept of, or oh, it's your fault, you are having anxiety, or it's, you know, for them not to see it as it's them. So you might then try, I think you were using kind of like the analogy of like uh, an elephant or yeah. something like the different animals. You the me the meerkat, the um, meerkat taking over the meerkat. that fight, flight, freeze response, the amygdala, which that we call the meerkat. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, that's it. So in some cases, let's say a young person is really like passionate about football, for example, and you can m maybe relate uh, a football player that they really like, and like, I don't know, Harry Kane and say, yes. you know, it's, it's normal to feel worried. At, you know, Harry Kane does feel worried before he goes onto the football page, before he plays a match. And how would you think he feels and what is it that he can do? Do you ever use that kind of model, like removing it from you, you to, okay, uh, it's, Let's let's think of another person. Uh, oh, know, definitely. And in fact, like. yeah. And in fact, it's funny you should say that football one 
because that that yeah. football analogy I use comes up a lot because I work with a lot of children who like football and um, right. in fact I've got an old article that I printed out ages ago and it was all about Wayne Rooney and using shows how old it was but him in particular using affirmations <laughs> um, before he goes right. onto the pitch and I obviously talk about mm -hmm. him but lots of other players usually do this before they go onto the pitch or pop stars you know they get together sometimes oh, yeah. they they huddle in a circle and they say um they have mantras you know that they often say together before they go out onto the stage so i yeah i definitely and i think it's really powerful yeah. when they realize you know that somebody that they admire their idol does this oh right well actually that yeah. is interesting and in fact with my son one of the key moments for him he's now 13 to think what you're teaching mum isn't a lo load of rubbish was he was watching I'm a celebrity <laughs> get me out of here and boy George was using a lot of affirmations and deep breathing and he said oh he he uses um what you teach and and he, it really helps him and it was like okay you'll you'll listen to a celebrity but you won't listen to me because I'm just your boring mum but when somebody <laughs> else says it who that you like maybe is yeah. on the tv or who they look up to it that can be yeah. really helpful as well definitely yeah. very powerful that's it and then we know a lot of them have like their own rituals like before they go to you know perform on stage or go and uh, play a football game definitely. um they follow like some of them do meditation relaxation listen to music calm breathing all of these techniques that you can then yeah and i think what's helped is actually a lot of these celebrities talk about this more openly now so for example marcus yeah. rashford is one of my son's heroes so he's written some amazing books about mindfulness um, you know, and, and I think more and more of these people in the public eye are talking about relaxation and mindfulness and there's television programs on about anxiety and how these celebrities have used mindfulness and relaxation and it's really helped them. So I think it's becoming, you know, more, um, I suppose it's, you know, in the public eye now, people are talking about it yeah. a lot more. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, absolutely. And I think it's, it's, certainly from a young age understanding how you know what, what's going on through your body life you're starting to feel you know tense your heart's beating fast that emotional literacy definitely i think i i agree i think teaching kids to learn and understand emotions it's quite overwhelming like for that age if you think that they're going through all these big feelings emotions not really understanding what's going what's going on and, and it can be really it's just like them. It's, yeah it can be sorry to interrupt it can be really no, frightening can be really frightening yeah. And they can think, what on earth is going on? You know, um, yeah. my, my friend's daughter, actually, she was having really bad stomach problems. Um, and they actually got her, um, you know, seen by a consultant and were lo looking, you know, doing scans and all sorts and cutting out things from her diet because they really didn't know what was going on. She moved up into a different class at school and they actually then realised that what it, she was then OK. Um, she her tummy problems all went away and they realized it was because another child in the class was actually bullying her and this child had been put into a different class and once they were separated the tummy problems went away so it was actually all anxiety based but maybe if she was better able to recognize oh actually you know some people get these really bad tummies if they're feeling anxious or in these situations, you know, this could cause headaches or it feels like butterflies in your tummy or with me, my stress goes straight to my shoulders and my back, you know, and up my neck and I get a headache. Acknowledging what these emotions can cause physically and then being able to verbalise them. And my 13 year old, you know, he's now got to the point. I mean, he is quite immature for his age um, because often children with ADHD are, uh, I think it's three years emotionally, um, you know, younger than um, his chronological age. But he he will say things like if his brother's winding him up, mum, I'm really starting. I'm going to lose it in a minute. So he's actually able to tell us that he's getting to that point and will actually go up to his bedroom and shut the door. Whereas when he was younger, he would not he would erupt like a volcano, go from the zero to a hundred, right. as we said. And, mm. um, and obviously it doesn't help if your brother's winding you up, but he's able to realize those feelings are coming. Um, and I think actually that also relates to um, 
the Coke bottle analogy as well, when children have been suppressing emotions all day at school or in a, often an educational setting, holding all, in all their emotions in front of the teachers and other pupils. And then we wonder why, you know, we get it in the net when they get home and they might suddenly erupt and have a meltdown. Um, and it's, yeah. as I say, it's called that coat bottle analogy because of the fizz all coming out, because obviously we yeah. are the people closest to them. And it's often with us that they feel that they can express these big emotions so it's learning yeah. these techniques, perhaps thinking, well, actually, when they come home from school can be a really difficult time. You know, what could they do? Could they go and have some chill out time in their bedroom? They've got their calm box there if they need it. Not asking, you know, too many questions when they get home, which we all do. I was guilty of doing as parents. What have you been doing today? You know, actually, sometimes <laughs> yeah. they just want to be quiet and have that downtime. Um, because they've been holding in a lot of emotions all day but like we do as adults you know when we're being professional we you know we might be actually having a really bad day but we hold it in professionally in front of our colleagues I, I describe yeah. this to parents we then get home to our husband or wife our other half and they say how was your day ah, and we lose it with them yeah. because well, they're the yeah. closest person to us yeah yeah of course I'm sure you're very familiar with the whole concept of masking that you're describing there of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Masking. We see this a lot. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And, and that's exhausting. And I think, yeah, the point I was just going to make in terms of, I know you work with schools, but certainly that is, is there any thought about incorporating relaxation meditation in the curriculum? Maybe. I don't know. Well, in, I mean, some, some schools, point? yeah, some schools um, are already doing that and recognizing um, over the last few years, in fact, well, really since um, the impact of lockdown and realizing that, um, mental health um, issues are on the increase when before when I used to, before the lockdown I used to teach my course and it was one in five children um, have them you know diagnosed with a mental health issue and now it's one in three um, so it really is on the increase so apparently there is more funding that is going into schools um, I think teachers are teaching more techniques but obviously you know they they teach usually I think you know the odd bit here and there it's not always, you know, a weekly session, um, but I think that there is hope and that schools and education in general are realising how important relaxation and well-being is. I mean, I get um, emails home from my son's school, as I say, it's just been because of my schedule at the moment. I've been focusing a lot more on the one to ones and other different work that I do. Um, but, you know, I so this is the reason I haven't been going in there. I used to run an after school club before lockdown. Um, but they do send home, like in newsletters, sometimes different tips about relaxation and well-being and mental health. So I think it is definitely more recognised now, which is good. Mm. Um, and yeah. I think there, I've heard that there is more, definitely more funding that is supposed to be going into schools for mental health support. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I think, you know, COVID and lockdown highlighted the whole issues with emotional well-being even more like with oh, the whole definitely. isolation and the the effects of that you can see it even up to now like three years later um it, it's still you know people think like you know we're out of lockdown and things have just gone back to normal but it, it's still people are still struggling oh definitely I've, I, really I've seen fully... i've seen the impact in different ways where children either loved being at home and were then very anxious about going back into the setting. Yeah. Um, children who find it very difficult being at home, e.g. my eldest son, because he lost control of, you know, of everything he could do. So then struggled with mental, mental health in that way because they wanted to be in school. They wanted to be doing all the things that they normally do. And then there are children who've become... Uh, um, quite obsessive in showing um, OCD type behaviours of hand washing um, and, and things to do with germs because of obviously the whole thing we did, you know, constantly washing your hands and things like that. So, have you know, I've got uh, showing some OCD type behaviour as well. Um, so, and like you said, people think, oh, it was three years ago. No, the impact is is ongoing, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Of course, and uh, amazing work that you guys are doing uh, at Relax Kids. And oh, uh, thank know, I, could you. I could talk to you for longer. <laughs> um, I, I need some more cards, actually. Have you still got more business cards? Yes. Do you know I need to get? I actually thought to myself, 
I've, I've run out. The other day I went to give someone one. Right. I thought, they've all gone again. So I'll, I'm going to order all some right. and then I'll get some over to you. That would be great. If yeah, that would be great. Want some. Yeah, Brilliant. certainly. And and uh, of course, I'll, I'll keep utilising your services. And I think it's a, it's a vital um, support system you have in place for most of our young people that we see that struggle with emotions, understanding emotions, dealing with emotions. And certainly some of these techniques can also work in the adult population as well. I'll just listen to you there because uh, we see adults as well. And um, regardless whether you have a diagnosis or not, and I think it should be just something that people can just learn and implement naturally and incorporate exactly. it within your daily routine like waking up doing some relaxation techniques before you face the day or um definitely and certainly going in the evening going to bed or even throughout the day as well like yes. now we've gone through this exam season with students that we're seeing struggling worrying anxiety understandably but yeah um it's it's definitely worth um you know implementing yeah, some phys of these physical e phys physical exercise is seen as such an important thing isn't it and it's yeah. it's making yeah. this as important of that as that like you're saying on that daily basis you know some deep breathing listening to a meditation doing it daily as yeah. important as exercise you know this is just as valuable of course of course dana absolute pleasure <laughs> catching oh, up lovely. with you lovely and, to talk uh, to yeah, you as well, well yeah yeah of course and uh yeah we'll catch up soon um and i will also send you the uh the audio and video recording of this podcast so you can watch and share with some of your clients and certainly we'll be doing the same thing on our social media pages and uh through just signposting some of our clients to you as well okay great i hope that was all okay <laughs> no absolutely yeah don't, don't worry about the little bleep that we had earlier yeah, okay. <laughs> no, but side, I, I mean so. i hope i am um... <laughs> I know you can edit bits. I, this bit at the end, you obviously won't show. But I said I, I hope I wasn't waffling yeah. too much. <laughs> so no, I hope no, it's absolutely. all okay. No, no, <laughs> no, no, no. Absolutely, very vital information that you're saying there, and oh. I think it helped me to understand because I know we've had chats um, yes. over the years and stuff. But to get a full insight from like from you, understand the work that you're doing, and how you know how beneficial this is certainly to to our client group. Um, yes. it's really, really been very an eye opener. So yeah, Brilliant. thanks for uh sharing your time with us no problem sorry i had to um cancel the other week but we got here in the end yes we did absolutely oh, yeah, and yeah as i say fine. say hi to jacob for me and it's, we'll it's do. lovely yeah. it's lovely seeing you and you and uh yeah look after yourself yeah and you take care enjoy your, and i'll get those cards get those Thanks, that's, yeah, prompt, that's prompted me now that job's got to go on the top of my list to get new cards printed yeah <laughs> Thank you. Exactly. Take care. <laughs> Bye. Thanks, Dada. Take care. Bye. 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 Bye.